All right, so this is gonna serve as your video for your corrections for unit one. If you're getting this video, that means you made it below a 70, and this is one of the requirements you have to do in order to retest. So you need to have a sheet of notebook paper, and on your notebook paper, at the top, you're gonna write your name. You're gonna write your ID and the date. And then your title for these corrections are unit one, test corrections. If you do not have the correct heading, if you do not follow this format that I'm doing, you will not get the credit and you will not be able to retest. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work through the test completely um, on the left side and then on the right side you're going to go back and you're going to tell me where you think you may have missed or messed up at. I'm not returning your test to you so you don't know which questions you missed, but if you're working through these and you're like, oh I forgot to do that, that's what you would write. So on the left side is where I have the problems. Number one was just solving for x. So number one is 3x minus 2 equals negative 17. Remember, when we're solving, our end goal is to get x by itself. So I'm first going to add 2 to both sides, cancel out, and I'm left with 3x equals negative 15. And my last step is to divide by 3, so then x equals negative 5. So then you would come over here. If you want to draw a line, you can and you're gonna tell me where your mistake was or where you think your mistake was. So maybe you added three. So you're gonna put here that instead of dividing by three, I added three. And you're gonna do that for every single problem. If you don't know if you missed it or not, maybe put where you think it was tricky, something along those lines. So number two was a simplifying one. It's over on the left again. I have the square root of 29 minus three cubed plus 5 plus 9. Remember, this is your order of operation, so you should have been doing your PIMDAS. We're first going to check for anything in parentheses. We do have a set of parentheses, so I'm just going to rewrite 29 minus 3 cubed plus, I'm going to do whatever is in parentheses, so 5 plus 9 gives me 14. So I've done parentheses. The next thing is to look and see if you have an exponent. We do, so we're going to do that 29 minus, and 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, which gives you 27. And then we still have that plus 14 as well. No more exponents. I need to check for multiplication and division now. There's none, so I'm going to cross them both off. And now we do addition and subtraction. But remember, we go from left to right. So it's going to be the square root of, we first need to do 29 minus 27, which is 2. And then your last step well, almost, is to do 2 plus 14, which is 16. Now, you have the square root of 16, which it does have a perfect square, so your final answer would be 4. Now, when I look at number 3, all we asked you was, how do you go from step 1 to step 2? And if you look, we got rid of the parentheses, which means that we distributed. So... There were four properties. There was commutative, associative, inverse, and distributive. The only one we've even talked about in class or through lecture is distributive, so that should have been a dead giveaway. Now, number four, you have an expression, which is 2x plus xz, and I tell you that x is equal to 4 and z is equal to 3. So what you're going to do is you're going to go in and plug it all in. So 2 times 4 plus 4 times 3, and you're going to do all your operations. 2 times 4 gives you 8, plus 4 times 3 is 12, and then the last thing is to do 8 plus 12, which gives you 20. So remember, for each of these, you should be writing over here on the side kind of what you think you may have done wrong, so your little corrections. So we just did number 4. We're going to move on to number 5. Number 5 is another order of operations. Remember, you always do your parentheses first, and in our parentheses, we actually have an exponent. So we're gonna do 18 divided by that two squared is gonna become four minus one squared. We still have our parentheses, so we need to do that. 18 divided by four minus one gives us three squared. So now we have 18 over, you can do your exponent now, three squared gives you nine. And then your last step, 18 divided by 9 is 2. Number 6. So I have 3x over 2 equals 6. Remember, when you have this one, you want to 
put 6 over 1 and we're going to cross multiply. 2 times 6 gives me 12, which is equal to 3 times 1, or 3x times 1, and that gives me 3x. And then your last step to solve for x is divide by 3. So you should end up with x equals 12 divided by 3 gives you 4. Number 7 again is another one where you have the expression you have to plug in. So we have m squared plus p squared, where m is equal to negative 1 and p is equal to 5. So we have to put that in parentheses. So negative 1 squared plus 5 squared. Negative 1 times negative 1 gives us a positive 1, plus 5 times 5 gives us a 25. And your last step, 1 plus 25 is 26. Number 8 is another expression with a square root. So we have 3 times 5 plus 25 divided by parentheses 5 squared. So remember, we want to do any parentheses first. There's no operations inside the parentheses. Remember, if it's like this, that means multiplication. So now we're going to look for our exponent. So the square root of, and I rewrite everything I don't use, plus 25 divided by 5 squared gives us 25. And now we're going to check for multiplication and division. We're going to go from left to right. So I have the square root of 3 times 5 gives me 15 plus 25 divided by 25 is 1. I now do 15 plus 1 to get 16. And remember that square root of 16 gives you 4. So number 9 is another expression, another PIMDAS we're going to do. Negative 5 minus 1 plus 3 minus 1 squared. We're going to do anything in parentheses first. So I have negative 5 minus 1, which is negative 6, plus you have 3 minus 1, which is 2 squared. I now do that exponent, so I'm going to leave the negative 6 alone, plus 2 squared gives me 4. And then finally, negative 6 plus 4 leaves me with negative 2. So the next couple, 10, 11, 12, and 13, I think, were the ones with the diagrams for points, lines, and planes. So I asked you which point is collinear with R and Q. And the first thing you had to do was look at R and Q, look at that line, and see what other point is on there. So when I look at R and Q, the only other point on that line is point T. Number 11 is another diagram. And I asked you to name a point on line G. G is that little cursive letter. So there are three points on that line. So you could have said it was point P, T or N. You had to look at your multiple choice answers and whichever one that was is what you would circle. Number 12. True or false, I asked you if points M and N are collinear. I gave you two points only and you should know that two points are always collinear so that one should have been true. Number 13. I said line J which is the one going up and down intersects the drawn plane at point Q. Remember, we talked about when it intersects, it goes from a solid to a dashed line, and it does that at point T, so this one would have been false. Remember, you're still doing your corrections, so if you're not writing something over to the right, I'm not going to give you that credit, and you won't be able to retest. So number 14, just real quick, I said true or false, points P, T, and R are coplanar. You first need to check and see if they fall on the same line, if they can be connected by the same line. And they can't, which means, true, they are coplanar. Any three non-collinear points form a plane. So now 15, we're back into some of the expressions. You have 2 plus 5 squared divided by 6 minus 1. So we're going to do our parentheses first. You do 6 minus 1 to get you 5. Our next one is the exponent, so 5 squared should give you 25. We check for any multiplication and division, we do have this one. So 2 plus 25 divided by 5 gives you 5. And your last step is to do 2 plus 5 to get 7. So on the right side, you'll write maybe where you think you went wrong if you miss a step, something like that. Number 16, I have n squared plus pn, where n is equal to 2 and p is equal to 3. So we plug in our numbers, 2 squared plus 3 times 2. Now we do our PIMDAS. I have no parentheses. I do have an exponent, though. 2 squared is 4 plus 3 times 2 is 6. And your last answer should be 10. 
Number 17, you have 1 plus n times negative 4 minus p, where n is equal to 6 and p is equal to negative 3. We plug in our numbers, so I have 1 plus 6 times negative 4 minus a negative 3. That's where a lot of us went wrong. So I'm going to clean up that second parenthesis, 1 plus 6 minus 4. Remember when you subtract a negative, you're just adding so now I'm going to simplify those parentheses. 1 plus 6 gives me 7, and negative 4 plus 3 gives me negative 1. And your last step is to multiply those together. 7 times negative 1 leaves you with negative 7. So number 18, we're solving for x. 4x minus 5 equals 11. We want to get that x by itself. So my first step is to add 5 to both sides. So 4x equals 16, and your last step is to divide by 4, so x is equal to 4. 19 is one of your multi-step that you have to do distributing in, so 3 parentheses, x minus 1 equals 21. We first need to distribute in parentheses, so 3 times x gives me 3x minus 3 times 1, which is 3, and that's equal to 21. Now, I still want to get the x by itself, so I'm going to add 3 to both sides first. 3x equals 24. I'm going to divide both sides by 3, so that x is equal to 8. And then our last problem is number 20. This is where the fraction comes into play, so x over 3 plus 1 equals 2. Now, while we did these, I told you you needed to get that fraction by itself first. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. When I do that, I have x over 3 equals 1, and we're going to put a, that 1 over another 1, make it into a fraction so that we can cross multiply. 3 times 1 is 3, which is equal to 1 times x, which is just x. So remember, on all of these, you worked them out with me. You should have 20 problems worked out. You should also have correction notes over to the side where you think you may have gone wrong, something along those lines. If you don't think you missed it, then you need to put that. But if I get your paper back and you only have one correction, you are not going to get the credit. So go ahead and make a list, make a note for each problem saying, well, I think this is a tricky part. Or maybe I messed up here. And that's where you'll get your credit from. This is just one part of the retest process. So make sure you check Google Classroom to see what else you have to do. And if you have any questions, let me know.